Hey folks and welcome to our next tutorial which will be about logic. I will show you the expressions and math effects nodes and tell you something about events and toggles. Then first let's take a look at the most important logic nodes. The expressions. You can calculate anything with the help of a C-sharp statement in here. Always make sure that your expressions have recognizable names and arguments for later use. So for example, when you want to calculate the sign of a number, you will have to name the expression sign, click on edit custom model, delete those arguments that you don't need, and add a new one, which you will name with a significant name like angle. You can now input your expression which will be in our case math dot sign of angle. So when you now change the input, the result will be calculated automatically. You may use any method of the system namespace like math, converts or string operations. You may also use if expressions if you use their short form, like if a equals O, then B, else C. The different types of expression nodes define their output. So always make sure that the result of your expression fits this type. If not, or you use an undeclared variable, the node becomes invalid and won't be revalidated. So when we enter an, a zero here, you get an expression error. So this red icon now means that this node won't be revalidated by Ventus. To output a boolean, you can simply use a float expression that outputs O as false and 1 as true. So when we type something like this, and bind a boolean value to it, it will be converted automatically. There are several nodes that you can use instead of complicated expressions. For example, the invert node. It simply changes the sign of the input. So when you have an input like this, in this case it is 0.9, it will turn into minus 0.9. Instead, you can check the treat logical property and bind its input to a boolean. Another example is the clipping node. This node transfers the input from one range to another. Also, there are several string operators. They provide functions like trimming or calculating the length and so on. Now we come to the math effects nodes. These nodes generate values over time with different functions, but basically they all work the same way. So take a linear node and insert it into the content editor. You can change its duration, which is interpreted as seconds. So let's test it with a duration of 5. Bind the position x property of an axis to it to make the result visible. So now I have a target 1 of minus 10 and target 2 is plus 10. So when we now activate the use target 2 boolean, this node will generate values until it reaches the new target. When we deactivate this, the new target is the target one again. This way you can simply animate properties that should interpolate slowly when their values are changed dynamically. There are other functions, for example an oscillator. It creates values similar to a spring. Also there's something like a damper. This one uses a function similar to the one of the sine or cosine. Lastly, let's talk about events in Ventus. Events are fired by different nodes when specific conditions are met. For example, the math effects nodes fire an event called reached as soon as the wanted target is reached. You combine this event to any method, for example to the nudge method of a mover. When you now uncheck this boolean again and the values reach the new target, which is in this case minus 10, 
the mover will nudge and create a value from 0 to 5 and then go back again from 5 to 0. Also, you can convert the events into a boolean by using a toggle. You can, for example, bind the use target to boolean of our damper to the toggle. And when you now click toggle, the damper will change its boolean and start its animation. To provide integer values via events, use the counter node. You can then simply start the forward or backward methods or the reset method. Another useful feature of events is the event argument. For example, use two events. One event is invoked when the other one is fired. But the first event will additionally provide an argument that will appear as an output in the second event. Now you can bind the nudge method of your mover and the max value to the second event. When you now invoke the first event and type in an argument like 10, the mover will generate values from 0 to 10 and back. When you type in minus 5, it will do the same for minus 5. There are some nodes that use event arguments directly, like the counter. Here you see the boolean use event arguments, and when you check this boolean and bind its reset method to an event, the counter will be resetted to the value that is provided by the argument. With the help of the event node, you can also turn a boolean value into a fired event. Whenever the shot boolean of the event turns from false to true, the event is fired as well. This is it about logic inventors. Just try out different combinations and use cases of what you just learned to get comfortable with it, because it may come in handy to know about them sooner or later. I hope I will see you next time when we will talk about the multi-touch nodes inventors.